Uh, hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. Um, we are going to take a look at uh, tokens in Breeze. Um, tokens are quite a powerful aspect, um, part of Breeze, and I really feel for those of you that don't know what they are or have sort of maybe got a bit of an idea of what they are, I use them a little bit, um, I really think it's actually um, really important that you get to know how they, how they work and what they do because they really are quite uh, powerful. Um, and they allow you to do a whole lot of things in Breeze that, um, um, that yeah, the things that you actually can't do in other, other photo booth um, applications. So um, we use tokens a lot in our business to develop more complex interfaces, um, but also uh, to output data in very specific ways. And when I say data, I mean, I mean photos and how we save those images um, in particular. Um, I realize that on the surface when a lot of you probably have looked at tokens, they, they sort of are these weird code little things and um, maybe seem a little bit scary, um, but when you sort of break them down um, to what they actually are, they're actually, actually quite simple on the most part and um, as is the case with a lot of things in Breeze, um, how they work is actually fairly logical. So it's just sort of a matter of, um, I guess, getting a better understanding of what you can actually do with them. Um, and then sort of um, seeing how you can apply that um, into your own business or into your own sort of processes, I guess. So, um, so yep, so today, basically, tokens will be your new best friend, hopefully. Um, and uh, this was supposed to be a live video, and we had a bit of a false start with that a couple of times now. So I'm, I'm recording this one offline and uploading it. So... Usually we'd have some comment, uh, you guys could comment along the way and I can answer some questions, but uh, this time around, I'm afraid um, uh, you'll have to hit me up after the fact um, if you have any specific questions, which is obviously totally okay. So we're going to jump into it. Um, if you've ever looked into the Breeze manual, and hopefully you have, or if you haven't, you definitely should be, um, uh, you will come across a section... Um, uh, dedicated to tokens and if, if we jump into the, the, the help manual here we come down and there's tokens and there's quite a lengthy section um, with all the available tokens that you can use um, so I realize when you look at this page it probably doesn't look like the most inspiring um, and fun read you're ever gonna gonna have in your life um, but it's quite interesting if you um, think about it, when you start thinking about how you can apply it um, um, to the events um, that you do. So I want to start with just uh, a bit of a brief overview of what tokens actually are um, and how they work. So basically what tokens are are these little bits of um, code and when you use these little bits of code in Breeze um, they get replaced with another piece of information automatically. Um, so, for example, um, I have three examples of tokens here. Um, the first one is dateless 8H. Whenever you use that code, it will automatic re automatically replace that with today's date minus eight hours. Um, if you use print template name token, it will automatically replace that token with the name of your print layout file. And you can use tokens in lots of different places in Breeze. You can use them um, on your print layout. So you can um, basically create uh, sort of standardized or template print layouts that automatically um, add the date onto the print layout so you don't have to manually update it, for example. Um, but you can also use them to name the photos that you're taking in Breeze and naming the folders that the photos are saving into. And you can also use them in file paths, so uh, where you're saving things, um, and if you're using profiles, um, you can use them in that as well. And that's sort of uh, largely what I'm going to concentrate on today is showing you how to use tokens specifically about naming photos and creating folders and places to save uh, images using tokens, because that's where I think it's actually the most powerful. So if we look at these three examples here, um, what they actually output is something like this. So if you use dateless 8H, um, it will actually output 
08-28, if um, that is today's date. Um, which it's not, I don't know why I didn't use today's date, but there we go. Um, so the next day it would be 2018-08-29, um, and the day after, dash 30. So rather than having to uh, manually type in the date, um, if you use a token, it'll automatically create the date for you. And it's the same with the print template name. If you load in a print template for Steve and Jess's wedding, it'll automatically use that name. Um, when you load in the next print template um, for John and Susie's wedding, it'll automatically use John and Susie wedding. Uh, and a different use is the documents template, uh, the documents token. If you use uh, that, um, Breeze will automatically know where your documents folder is on your computer. And that's a really handy one because if you have multiple photo booths uh, with perhaps different um, usernames, you don't need to know the exact path of your, where your documents folder is on your computer. You can just use the documents token and Breeze will figure out where it actually is on your computer. Um, so real, uh, and this is just a, a small you know, section of the tokens that are available. If we jump back into the, um, the user manual here, um, there's quite a lengthy list of um, available tokens to you. Um, there's a big section on date ones that you can use, um, and that's very handy if you need uh, perhaps a very specific way of saving images or naming images um, to do with um, days and times and minutes and seconds and months and that sort of thing. Um, and there's basically a whole bunch of um, advanced features here where you can modify the information um, as well. And we'll touch on that just a little bit today, but, but not too much because that's sort of taking things um, to sort of a whole different level. So what I want to do now is just jump, um, into, jump into a photo booth and actually um, show you um, how some of this stuff works um, in, in actuality. So if we just, I've just started up Breeze here. Um, I'm just going to make sure I've got a... Uh, my token demo loaded in. So I'm going to come up to File and down to Preferences. And this is a part of Breeze that I think most of you should be fairly, fairly familiar with. Um, this is where you can set the name of the photos um, um, and also where your photos are saved um, when they're downloaded from the camera. So, you know, as standard, you might have it set up to look something a little bit like, like this. So your, your photos, when they're taken, they'll say, uh, I'm going to be called image underscore one, image underscore two, um, and they're going to save into C colon Dropbox events. Um, but probably what a lot of you do at this point is you might tick the year, month, and day folder. And as you'll see down here, that's now going to save your images into this year, month, um, date sort of format. Now that's obviously a totally fine way to, to do things and just uh, a completely acceptable way to, um, to use this. Um, but if you use tokens, uh, you can start being a little more flexible, a little more creative with how you, how you do things. So just looking at uh, those examples from earlier, if we were to just untick these, and let's just say, uh, at the after events here, I type in uh, dateless 8h. So what you can see straight away, um, Breeze has now replaced dateless 8h with um, today's, today's date. Now the nice thing about this 8h thing, um, in case you're wondering, what that means is if my event today runs past midnight, rather than saving the images into 2018-06-29, um, it will keep them into 28. It basically tell, tells Breeze to put the clock back eight hours just to make sure, um, it, just to, to cover these events where, where they run over midnight because um, it's sort of annoying if, if your images get saved into two different folders, uh, especially if you're using uh, social media sharing software that's monitoring, uh, monitoring today's dates for the images and you roll past midnight and then it can't find them anymore. Um, so dateless 8h um, is just a nice neat way of putting in today's date and making sure when we roll over midnight um, everything stays in the same folder. So um, we could 
add to that uh, one of my um, uh, favorite tokens, which is the print template name token. Um, and if you're not aware of what the print template is, let me just quickly show you that first. Um, if you, now I have created a, 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 a a, a shortcut button for it for layout, but it's basically into your um, print settings. Um, if you go into import layout, you can essentially um, create um, all your upcoming events in advance and, and save them here as templates. And then essentially all your staff need to do is pick the, pick the template for the job that they're doing and they hit the OK button and then it will bring it into Breeze. Now the really nice thing about this is, for example, um, if we're doing this particular job here that's only a single image layout, bring this in, do that. Uh, this will automatically set Breeze to take just a single photo. So if I come into here now, um, Breeze will now only take one photo without having to do anything else. Um, if we just jump back in here, I'm getting off topic a little bit. Uh, we'll put it back into here. That one. Let's do that. Yep, 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 yep. Um, admin, now it's set it back to taking three photos. So using print template um, layouts like that is really a, re a really um, handy way to, to make it e a very easy way for staff to to load in events essentially. But it's got the added benefit is that, is that you can use the name of the layout um, as a token. So I'm gonna pick this one here, so job we're doing um, tomorrow. Um, okay, so just go back in, yes, 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 okay. So I'll come back down into my um, preferences here. So what I wanna do is add to the end of this, the token, Oops. Print template name. And so what that's automatically going to do now is save uh, any photos that we take from here on in are going to save into a folder called 180629 queensland Education Conference because that's the name of the event that we're doing. So I'm just going to close that and what I want to show you is if I come back in here and pick a different layout so I'm going to pick this one here. I'll just OK all this. So now if we go back to File Preferences and check again, now we can see that any photos we take from here on in are going to save into C Dropbox Events 180628, a Darling Affair launch party, uh, because that's the event that we're doing tonight. Um, so that's really handy because when you're when you have uh, especially when you have st other staff doing events for you, it means they don't need to worry about setting up folders or you don't have to pre-set up folders or anything like that. Um, all they need to do is pick the job that they're doing from the layout, um, import it, uh, super handy because it sets everything up pretty much the way you want it, um, and it will save the, fold the, the images um, right into the correct um, in, in, into a nice neat client folder for you without having to do anything. So that's a really good example of me of using um, a token. And it's all done through this one called print template name. Now if you don't want to do it that way, another way you could do it, um, I'll just delete that. Um, Breeze have an, has another function called photo booth event info where you can set the name of the event in here. So I can put in Steve and Jess wedding. Um, and I go OK. And I come down here, I go preference. And here I know that the name of that token is um, event, oh, event name. And that automatically now replaces um, uh, event name with Steve and Jess wedding. So I can come back up in here. And I can, um, Peter 21st, or whatever it's going to be. We come back here. Um, and now the images are going to save into a folder called Peter 21st. Um, 
but we can use this in uh, more than just um, more than just for the folder where the images are going to save. Um, we can also use it to name the images as well. So instead of just calling the photos um, image, we can call it uh, oh, typo event event name. Um, so now the photos are going to save into C Dropbox events P21st, Peter and the name of each photo that gets saved is going to be Peter21 underscore 001, 002, 003, um, etc. Um, so that's, um, uh, and I'll just, while, while we're here, if we want to start getting, um, you know, um, throwing in a few other tokens, um, we can then string them together so we can put in date less 8h um, and we can put, say, put a space between that and that will save the images into a dated folder called 2018-06-28 Peter 21st um, or if we put a backslash in between them um, it'll create a folder called 2018-06-28 and then a subfolder Peter 21st now, you might want to do it that way if you have multiple events on the same day or if you're sort of saving images from multiple photo booths into the same folder through Dropbox or Resilio Sync or something like that. Um, so that's a sort of fairly um, basic look at tokens and how, how they work. But sort of the neat thing is with Breeze is that you can grab any of these tokens that you see um, uh, in, from the help manual, um, so for example, um, let's just say percent A, okay, that's a good one. So you can grab that, um, you can copy it if you can't remember percent A, uh, and you can just paste it in or type it in, percent A, uh, and you can see straight away what it does. It basically gives you a live preview. So if you're not sure what some of these tokens are, or how they'll affect um, affect things, just open up the preferences here and just drop them into the file name or the download folder path, and you can actually get the sort of live preview of what they do. Um, and there's no harm in just trying a few different ones um, and seeing what you sort of come up with. Um, that percent A one is actually quite a handy one. Um, if you were doing, let's just say, for example, um, a, a multi-day corporate event, so, um, big corporate gig. Okay, so that's the name of it, of the event, and it goes for five days. And what you want to do is sort of uh, keep all the images under um, the name of, of the client, but then you want them saved into separate folders for each day of the event. So what you would do is put in, we're using the event name um, uh, token here, but we could go backslash um, percent capital A and then what that's going to do is automatically save the images into uh, a nice uh, day named folder for each day of the event so if it goes Thursday Friday Sunday Sunday uh, we'll have a nice folder called big corporate gig and in that we're going to have a subfolder for Thursday another folder for Friday and another folder for Saturday um, without you having to type in anything on each of those days so these sorts of uses of tokens really do make life um, really quite simple um, for yourself and very easy for your staff as well because they don't even need to think or worry about um, where, the, where the data has been saved. It just sort of does it automatically. Um, so I want to, um, so basically I, I want to look at a couple other, um, uh, step this up a little bit and have a look at some other, um, other things that we can do with tokens beyond just uh, sort of uh, simply changing where where things are saved or how you named how you name files as well. So I'm going to jump back in to the booth here. Oh, no, nope, not that one. Here we go. So I'm going to close. No, I did not mean to close. Open this one back up. That's um, let's have a look. We will have a look at profiles. Okay. 
let's say, let's say that you are running a, uh, a fundraiser photo booth for your, um, for a political cause and um, it's not really a, a hidden backdoor data collection um, scam for um, Cambridge Anal Analytica. Um, but let's say you have this photo booth set up where um, people get to choose um, where you have multiple profiles, basically. Um, and uh, in this particular example, um, the profiles are either um, Oprah Winfrey for president or Donald Trump for president. Re-president election, I guess. So basically, in this situation, um, you know, it's a fairly standard, very simple, multi-profile setup. Um, guests come up to the photo booth and they go, oh, well, I want, you know, I want to re-elect Trump, so I want my photo with um, Trump. So they click Trump, counts down, uh, makes a short little GIF. Let's wait to finish that processing. Okay, so we've got the GIF, um, and that's that. And that's sort of the way that we normally do things. But let's say you do have this sneaky little ulterior motive where you're actually secretly polling people um, and you really want to know people's voting preferences. Um, as standard, um, you don't really get to know much about people's preferences unless we do a little, um, work a little magic with some tokens and save the data in a, in a more useful format. So what we're going to do here is jump back into preferences and what we want to do basically we want to know we want to split the photos into separate folders based on who they picked Donald Trump or Oprah Winfrey so that way at the end of the event we can look at all the um, images and we can very easily see how many people picked Donald um, over how many people picked Oprah and the way we do that is we need a token a special token um, which is called Photo Booth Sub Der. Um, and I'm going to try and find it here. And it's right here in the manual. Photo Booth Sub Der. Now, if you were just reading through this manual and you saw a token called Photo Booth Sub Der, you'd probably have no idea what it is. Um, but this is the thing with tokens. You do sort of need to take the time to sit down and read this very exciting page um, to learn a little bit about what what all the option, what all the tokens are, and then take the time to experiment and breeze to see how they affect and how they manipulate um, information. So, photo with subder, basically, what that does is um, it will replace the token with the name of the folder where your photo booth images, um, screen images, and assets are stored. So, in um, if I just jump back to the photo booth for a sec, basically um, in this example, because it's a multi-profile setup, um, we have something that looks like this. We have one profile and one set of screen images for our menu page. Um, so that's the, um, that's the folder of images that's got our menu like that. Then we have another folder uh, for the profile that has Oprah as our selection as we can see here. Um, and then we have a second, um, a third profile with, um, with Donald Trump. So basically what's going to happen is uh, the token photo booth sub -der is going to replace, um, uh, replace uh, with the name of one of these folders basically. So if we select Trump, it's going to use um, replace it with the word Trump. If we select Oprah, it's going to uh, the token will be replaced with the word Oprah. So if you come back into to Breeze down to our preferences, and we put a backslash, and we put in photo booth sub de, uh, and actually one good thing to note, aside from spelling mistakes. Um, tokens are also um, case sensitive, I think. Let me just confirm that, I think they are. No, yeah, maybe not, I thought they were. Anyway, it's all good. Um, so we've put in photo booth sub -der, 
And because the last profile that I loaded in Breeze was the menu page, you can see that it's actually um, replaced Photo with Subder with menu. But let's jump in and take another, another photo. This time I'll um, select Oprah and we'll run this through. Okay, and um, I'm just going to do one for, for Trump while we're here. Okay, so we've got that one. So let's X out of Breeze here and let's have a look at where and how this has saved our data. So if we come back to C, we've got C Dropbox events. Um, I had done some test um, shots before, so um, that's why I've got the GIF folder and MP4 folder here, but just ignore those for the minute. Um, we now have a folder called Oprah, and in here is another set um, of all the, the data for that session. So here's our GIF file. And if we go back here, we have a folder called Trump. Okay, so we're now starting to split um, uh, where, how the data is saved based on the selection that guests have made in the photo booth. Um, and I sort of joke about using this as a way to secretly poll people, but this is actually the kind of things that um, corporate clients want. Um, they want to collect data on their users and, and they're gathering information. And Breeze is just really good at letting you do this sort of thing um, in quite a sneaky sort of way because. Uh, guests at the event would probably have no idea that you're actually collecting data on, on them in this particular way. So let's just jump back in here again and have another look at what we could do. Um, we could basically do something like this. Um, for booth sub uh, um, uh, spell that right. Okay, so I'm just gonna change the file name to photo booth sub for president. Now, if we run through another session. <clears throat> so we've got Trump here, I'm just gonna exit out. We'll come back to our folder where those um, all saved. And if we go into the Trump folder, our files are now being called Trump for President. Um, so when we present the, send all the data to the client, um, and they get their files, and um, you know, a little bit of fun in this particular instance. But obviously, um, in real world applications, naming the files accordingly um, can be really important. Um, so that's a slightly more, um, you know, stepping up the exam. You know, the, what you can do with tokens a little bit. Um, from the first examples. So moving on from there to something, uh, a, another example of how you can use tokens in a real world sort of manner. Um, where's my folder? Uh, yep, okay, I'll look at this one. Okay, so you can also use the information that you collect in uh, surveys in Breeze um, elsewhere as well. So for an example, I'm gonna start a session here. Um, now, in this particular example here, before guests can start the photo booth session, they're required to enter their team name. So let's say it's a, um, a charity fun run, and there's um, teams of people that are running together, um, you know, corporate teams and family teams and sporting teams. Um, and the organizers are wanting to collate um, the photos, group all the photos by team name so that they can more easily send the images on to these people um, after the fact or they can, you know, do, do something else with them. Um, oops, it's going to run itself. So what we want to do in this example is have guests um, uh, enter their team name before they take this take their GIF or their photo or whatever. So we hit that, um, we see Team Steve, and we hit OK, and it starts the session and runs as normal. Mm -hmm. 
So because I'm just back to my sort of default settings and breeze, um, the files are just going to save into C Dropbox events um, just as they sort of normally um, normally would. So we'll come into here. Um, so here we go, this one here, as it were. Um, so we've allowed guests to enter the information using a survey, but now we need to do something with that to make that information more useful for the client. So I'm just going to delete all these out just so they don't get confusing for us. So what we're going to do is come back in here um, and what we want to do is add in some um, tokens uh, about the survey. So if we have a look at the user manual again, um, and a handy little trick, surprise, surprise, if you can't find what you're looking for, just search for it. Um, and I just search for survey and here's a couple um, tokens um, exactly um, relating to surveys. So basically, um, because Breeze can have multiple surveys, I think you can have up to 10 survey pages and then you can have multiple um, uh, data entry points on each survey. The token, um, you need to tell the token which survey number you want to use and which input um, data input uh, number that you want to use. So we only have one survey and we're only asking for one piece of information. So as it were, it's actually going to be survey one text um, input one so we can either copy that and paste it into the photo booth or it's not particularly too hard to remember so we can just type it in so we come over here and we go um, survey survey one underscore text one and so now we're going to start saving our photos into a folder by team name automatically so this time if we come in here and we hit start and we type in team Steve and hit go. We'll just exit out of here, we'll have a look at how that's saved. We now have a folder called Team Steve. So I'm going to run another one just so we can get a bit of a grass. So we've got um, the Gators. This is another team. So we run that. And we close that and we come back. And here we go, we've got a folder called the Gators and there's the, the GIF files for, for the Gators. Now, what happens if we run this again and just by coincidence, there's another Team Steve. And we put that in and we run it, what's gonna happen? Well, the world won't end, but what it's gonna do, it's gonna save these images into the same um, Team Steve folder. Now, in some instances, and just to prove that I'm not making that up, here we go, so we now have two GIFs in here. Um, now, in some instances, that might be completely okay because Team Steve may have come back for a second go um, and the team names might all be completely unique um, and it'd be totally acceptable for have, having, in fact, it might even be preferable in some instances to have um, everything, uh, you know, if there's a duplicate team name, to have it saved into the same folder again. But you know, speaking from experience and public events and these sorts of um, large scale activations, chances are Team Steve has gone and they're never coming back to the photo booth and it's more likely that there's a second Team Steve. So we need to think about that and deal with that with, um, with a token. So what we can do is, um, and there's multiple ways that you can handle this, but let's just for fun look at a, um, uh, a different token instead of um, something we've already used. We'll jump back over to our tokens page for a minute. Um, I know there's a token called UID and UID stands for Unique ID. When you use this token it basically generates just a random um, letter and number code. 
And so if we use this unique ID in the folder name, it just ensures that we're never going to get a, um, a duplicate folder name. Um, if you read the manual here, these unique IDs are guaranteed not to repeat within 72 hours and probably never within 10 years. So it's pretty safe to say that um, you're not going to have a problem with duplicate file names. So we could take that unique ID um, and we could put it perhaps after the team name. So what that's going to do is now create a folder in this particular instance called Team Steve with this code after it. And that would just essentially guarantee that we're not going to have a duplicate. So let's see how that works in reality. Team Steve, we'll run that through once. And we'll just run it through once more. Here comes the second team, Steve, to see how to see how Breeze deals with that. Okay, we'll close that, exit out here. Let's have a look. We'll come back here. So now we have two Team Steve folders, but they're unique because we're using this unique ID um, at the end of it. So we're basically guaranteeing that we're never going to have a double up or a duplicate of, um, of, of team names. So that's just another example of how you can use um, tokens. Um, this you know, might be a slightly more niche one, but it's quite an interesting one because there's all sorts of data that people might enter aside from team names. It could be their, um, their actual name, it could be their email address, it could be their postcode. Um, and that's actually an interesting one if you had an event um, with people from all over or a photo booth um, from all over and you needed to collate the images by postcode, you could have everyone's um, image from the same postcode saved into the same folder. Um, all sorts of things are possible um, with that. Um, moving on to, I think, my last example, which is um, uh, slightly more complex again, um, but a really, really good one. Um, Yes, that is a truck backing up outside the building. Okay. Um, keyboard. Survey. Okay. So a different type of survey you can do in Breeze is one that has um, checkboxes. Um, and checkboxes are very handy for all sorts of things, for having uh, people agree to terms and conditions, um, like, you know, can, can you use their image for advertising purposes? Um, are they over 21? Um, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, but a good example that came up for us, or has come up for us quite a few times, is um, allowing people to give, uh, giving people permission to, um, use their photo in a live feed. So an event we did recently uh, was at a college campus and they had a photo booth set up and the images that were gonna be taken in the photo booth, they wanted to be um, live streamed around the campus on all the TVs that they had and big screens. Now obviously uh, not everyone's gonna be okay with having their image beamed across the campus. So uh, they wanted a way to be able to easily um, uh, easily know which people wanted their photo, were okay with having their photo streamed and which people weren't. Um, it's it's a sort of a similar similar concept when people, when clients want to upload images to their you know business Facebook account. Not everyone's going to be okay with that. Um, so obviously one way you could do it is just to manually moderate the photos and ask people and then make sure they don't get um, added into the, into the mix, but that's sort of a very messy manual process. So you can easily take care of this by using a survey in Breeze and a checkbox. So let's have a quick look um, at how this um, works. So this is just a, um, a survey in Breeze that I've just prettied up a little bit in, in Photoshop. Um, and, and, and before we get into this, I'm going to quickly show you one other thing. Um, 
as of Breeze 3.11, I think, um, there's the new um, info screen option, which is perfect for displaying um, privacy pol policies and things like that. So um, you can add one of these in. So um, probably particularly relevant in, in uh, the EU at the moment with the, the um, new data protection laws that have come in. So you can um, put in uh, um, privacy statements and all sorts of things really, and there can be multiple pages of these. So if you need to have very long terms and conditions, you can very easily add them in. And if it's multi-pages, you can actually add a, um, a second and third and a fourth page and have a next next button that people can sort of step through. So um, that's really kind of a handy thing to have. Um, so in this case, basically the process is, they press the start button, uh, but then it says, but first, can we add your photo to our live feed? Yes, I agree. Um, and can we use your photo for advertising purposes? And yes, I agree. So then we hit start and the session goes ahead as, as normal. So let's let that run through and then we'll have a look at what happens to the information. So if we just come back to uh, see Dropbox events, uh, I'm just gonna delete these folders so I get confused. So basically, um, I've, because I've reset everything back to um, standard where we're saving things, um, all the, the images, the GIF in this example, are just saving as, as normal. Now, when you do a survey, the survey information is actually written into this, uh, the summary XML file, and you can, you can have a look at that file, and you'll see down the bottom here, um, that survey one, checkbox one, can we post your photo online, um, has been checked. So, uh, in computer nerdry, nerd, nerd talk, nerdery, nerdery, nerd, nerdery speak, um, one means something's been ticked on, um, a zero means it's been ticked off, or it's not, not on. So, um, so we know here, because it says one, that it's, it's been ticked. Same for this one this year. Um, so, and this is what I mean, you know, if you're wanting to split the photos out, so some get picked up by the live stream and some don't, you don't want someone having to sit here and look through every XML file, seeing if it's been checked, and then manually moving that GIF into a separate folder so, you know, Breeze Viewer or your slideshow program can pick it up and um, can, can monitor it. That's sort of, you know, um, just tedious and not practical. So let's have a look at what you can actually do with this information to, to make it easier. So I'm just going to delete these out so we don't confuse ourselves. So we'll come back into here, File Preferences, and we need to add in some tokens. Now, in this, and I'll just back up for one sec, in this particular example, um, we're not as interested in splitting our photos out um, into separate folders as to whether people are happy to have their photo used for advertising purposes. It's more important in this example that we split the photos out into separate folders for the live feed thing. So we can have our live feed program monitoring just the one folder of people that have agreed. So, but we will deal with the advertising thing, um, but we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. So we'll come down here. Um, so what we want to do is make sure that our um, people that have ticked uh, the live, sleep, live feed option have their photos saved into a separate um, event. So what I'm going to do here, and just throwing in another um, token, I'm going to put in print tem template name. Um, and then we need to put in the token that deals with the survey checkbox. Um, so let's go back to the Breeze user manual and we will find um, what we need. So we'll search for survey and lo and behold, here's one here for survey checkboxes. So basically, um, uh, similar to what I was saying before, uh, Breeze can have multiple surveys and you can have multiple checkboxes. Um, in this example, we have two checkboxes, check so we need to tell Breeze which one we want, to, which one we're, we're talking about. So in this case, it's survey one, and again, it's checkbox one. So that's the token that we want. 
So we'll come back to the booth and what we're going to do is add in the token survey1 underscore checkbox1 making sure I spelt that correct survey1 underscore chk box1 yeah that's correct okay so that is all good um, so we're going to okay that and we're going to run through um, a session again. Can we use your photo in the live feed? Yes. Can you we use your photo for advertising purposes? Yes. We start the session and let's see what that does. Okay out of here. So it's now created a folder called um, Date Producer and Chris and that's because I used the print template name in there. We come in here and we have a folder called one. So one means as I said before that the checkbox was ticked, the checkbox was on. So therefore in nerd talk um, one equals on. So uh, we know that anything in the folder one they've agreed to and here we go. So let's run that again and not agree to the live feed and we'll just run through it and uh, we will see that that will create a folder, subfolder called zero because zero means off or not checked or not selected. So we'll come out back here, come back to Patricia and Chris. Now we have two folders, one and zero. So all the people that have agreed are in the folder one and all the people that haven't agreed are in the folder zero. Now let's deal with the advertising thing. So we'll come back into here. Um, basically what we can do, um, I'm not as interested, like I said, in saving the um, photos into a separate folder as um, I don't really care that much about the advertising thing to split them into folders, but I would like to know. so. Um, I want to add that into the name of the um, photo or the GIF that gets saved. So because there are two checkboxes, it's basically the same um, token we used before, which is survey1, uh, but this time it's going to be checkbox2. Okay, so we'll do that, um, okay that, and we'll run through, uh, we'll say agree, agree, and we'll see what happens. So we'll close that, we'll have a look at the data. So they ticked it so we know it's going to be in the one folder. Um, and here we have it here, image underscore one, triple zero one. Now that one is pertaining to the checkbox two that they ticked it. And one means on, so that one means that they agreed um, to, to us using their photo for advertising purposes. Um, so that's how you take a checkbox and you do something a little more useful with it. But the problem that we have now is that these ones and zeros sort of get a little bit confusing. And if you look at this example here, if you're just glancing over the files, um, it's not particularly easy to know which, um, which of those images um, the client had agreed for you to use for advertising purposes. So we need to use another little token, another little more advanced trick and breeze to turn that one into um, some words or turn the zero into a more descriptive phrase so we really know what's going on. Um, and you can do that. Um, and this one, I'll, I will forewarn, is not probably not really going to be for people that are really starting out with tokens. Um, but it's still, I think it's good to watch and have a look so you can see um, see what you can do um, sort of the power of tokens so we're going to jump back into um, the manual here and what we're looking for is a uh, this section here called tokens for modifying strings which um, if you thought this page in general was pretty um, hard to understand or boring then um, some of the stuff in here will probably um, break your head 
um, and it breaks my head sometimes trying to um, figure things out. Um, but when you do, um, you can really do some really cool stuff. Um, so what we want to do in this case is basically use an if test. Um, if you don't know what an if test is, um, it's or an if then statement, I suppose, is the other way, whatever is the other thing it's called. Um, it's basically a little thing that does another little thing and do some googling on it if you want to want some fun times but I'm gonna try, <laughs> I'm gonna try and explain it a little bit yeah um, I'm not really a computer person in terms of I'm, I'm like I'm not a programmer um, um, I, I, I know a little bit of HTML and a few little bits and pieces um, but I am sort of good at figuring things out so if you're the kind of if you're fairly analytical or you're the kind of person that can um, look at something and break it down into its logical parts, then you will actually find these string modifiers and this if statement actually quite um, quite achievable. So um, I'm going to attempt to explain it to you. Um, Chris could, Chris Breeze could probably explain it a lot better, but um, he also may break your head explaining it as well. Um, so um, I'll I'll give it a go. So basically, what we have here is um, this if statement or this if uh, this this token for modifying a string, and basically it's saying um, if the uh, it, it's looking at a particular it's looking at let's say another token, and then saying if that if that particular token equals one thing, what do you want it to output? If that token um, says another thing, what do you want it to output then? So in the example of um, the checkboxes, what we're really saying is, if the checkbox is on, what, what do you want it to say? If the checkbox is off, what do you want it to say then? Um, so in terms of the live feed, what we really want to say is, if, the check, if, if someone has ticked the checkbox to allow the live feed, we want it to save into a folder called live feed. Um, if they haven't ticked that checkbox, we want it to save into a folder um, called no live feed. Um, so that is sort of the, 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 um, the guts of it basically. Um, so what that would really look like is something like this. So basically if survey one checkbox one um, equals one, then we want it to output the words live feed. If survey one uh, checkbox one equals zero, we want it to output the words no live feed. So basically, uh, survey one underscore checkbox one is the thing that we're questioning. Um, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about whether the checkbox is on or whether the checkbox is off. And then really what we're saying is what do we want it to say when it's on, what do we want it to say when it's off? So when checkbox one is on, live feed, checkbox one is off, no live feed. Make sense? Probably not. Let's have a look at how that really works in the real. So basically we're gonna add in uh, the token that says if survey one check box one, so we just entered that token because that's what we're questioning. If it equals one, we want to say live feed. Uh, if it equals zero, we want to say no live feed. Okay. So we can see down here that um, that appears to be working. So we'll close that. Uh, we'll start the booth and we'll run that through and we'll see how we go. So we're gonna Tick that, I'll say agree. I'll close that, I'll just pop it out of here. And so we can see um, in the event folder, we now have a folder called live feed um, where it saved our photos. So if we run this again, and this time we don't ch check this, We'll see what that does. We'll close that. And now we have a folder called no live feed. 
Um, so now we are splitting our photos into folders that make a lot more sense rather than ones and zeros. We have live feed and no live feed. So <clears throat> let's deal with that um, uh, advertising thing um, in a similar way. So let's add it up in here to the name. So if uh, typos survey one check box two. If it's on, we want it to say, um, let's say, ads. Uh, if it's off or zero, let's have it say, no ads. Okay. And check that that's all okay. This space there. I think we're good. So, okay, that, uh, we'll run that through. Uh, let's say, Agree, agree. We'll see what we get. So we got live feed. Oops, and that didn't work because I made a typo. Yep, okay, good, good. I'm not gonna, I was, I was gonna stop this and edit it out, but I'm not going to, because it's good to see mistakes. So basically what I've done here, I've just missed a bracket. So servo one checkbox one, because it is a token, needs to be in the little curly bracket. So I think that should be right now. Um, only one way to find out. Run it through again. Let's say agree, agree. Um, you know if your tokens don't work because rather than outputting the thing that they should like the date it just will output the token itself um, curly bracket something or percent something um, there we go so that time it's worked so we say it was uh, we agreed to the live feed and we agreed to ads so it says image underscore ads um, and that is a lot more useful than image underscore one double oh two or whatever it was before. So there you have it. That is basically a sort of a quick look at um, tokens and, and a few simple examples and a, and a few more um, uh, advanced examples. But really, that's not even scratching the surface of what you can do with this stuff. I mean, it really is just incredibly powerful stuff. Um, and we use it a lot um, in our business with the photo booth guys to create um, all sorts of complex stuff for our customers. And the thing is that a lot of people don't take the time to get to know how Breeze really, how the inner workings of it really, um, how, how it really functions, what you can really do with it. But the people that do um, are able to just achieve these amazing things that just no one else can. And from uh, from a business perspective, that gives you a, a very strong competitive edge when you're quoting and pitching for work, especially on the corporate front. So I really encourage you to delve in, have a, have a play with this stuff. Um, and if, if you need help, or you've got questions, just reach out to me, just tag me on a Facebook post and I'll uh, do my best to jump in and try and help you out um, and, and get your head in the right direction. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I do apologize for the delay on getting this video out with um, the, the false starts with a couple of Facebook lives on this one. So I uh, appreciate the patience and thanks so much guys.